This camera, part of a flying laboratory, is recovered by Clyde Holliday of Johns Hopkins, who prepared it for its trip to the upper stratosphere. Rivaling the fantastic imagination of Jules Verne, the camera brought back a record of a flight into the heavens of a captured German B-2 rocket. At White Sands, New Mexico, the huge missile takes off. Air Force pictures show the rocket in flight, and the flying camera automatically takes over. The huge projectile drops the Earth behind at the tremendous speed of 4,000 feet per second. The rotation of the rocket causes the planet to spin before the lens, and the camera photographs the Earth 65 miles straight down. The horizon, 720 miles away, and the curvature of the Earth are astonishingly apparent in this still picture from the film. An observer in the rocket could have seen San Diego, Salt Lake City, Kansas City, and San Antonio. Approximately 1,600,000 square miles of the Earth's surface was revealed. The rocket reached the 65-mile height in three minutes. This giant engine of destruction, designed by Hitler to annihilate allied nations, now serves the worthy cause of peacetime research. This grainy film from the 24th of October 1946 is the first time Earth was pictured from outer space. It was taken with a DeVry 35mm camera bolted to the side of a V-2 rocket, the kind used to blow people up during the Second World War. Launched from the White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico, the rocket and its camera soared haphazardly to an apogee of 65 miles before coming back down again. That height is about three miles above the Kármán line, which is the name given to the notional divider between Earth's atmosphere and space. It was a significant moment. The somewhat hectic capture took place at a much higher altitude than had ever been achieved before. In fact, it was five times higher, allowing for the first time the framing of the Earth's curvature and an awe-inspiring view across a vast expanse of land. The previous highest image was taken just 13 miles up, only about twice the cruising altitude of a commercial aeroplane. In other words, before the V2 camera rocket, no one had witnessed a photorealistic image of our planet at any kind of range. And for centuries, we only knew what the world really looked like thanks to map making, which relied on triangulation and modelling and wasn't always very accurate. Yet within just a handful of decades, humans were sending satellites into space to track weather patterns constantly and in real time. The V2 short film wasn't just an eyebrow-raising escapade or a technological stepping stone progressing humanity a few centimetres into the future. It was also the starting pistol for a space race of sorts, one that saw cameras take progressively more extraordinary images of our home from gradually further and further away, deeper and deeper into the outer reaches of the solar system, each time revealing something new about the planet we live on. So let's take a photographic voyage through space and time to discover whether capturing the cosmological lifeboat that is our little blue planet in all its beauty and vulnerability makes us view our world any differently. Man in Space this is the first photo of Earth taken from space with a human in the frame. The person in question was cosmonaut Alexei Leonov, and the date was the 18th of March 1965. Leonov was a Russian cosmonaut who had only trained to become a pilot 10 years earlier and entered the Soviet space program in 1960. The picture is a still from the film of his and humanity's first ever spacewalk, undertaken by the two-man crew of the Voskhod 2 mission, a 26-hour up-and-down job incorporating just 17 orbits of the Earth. For 12 minutes and 9 seconds, Leonov free-floated in outer space, a 5-metre umbilical cord, all that connected him to the rest of humanity. The apparent calmness of the picture belies the fact that Leonov is travelling at thousands of miles an hour, 475 kilometres above the ground. Below is the turning planet. As he drifted, Leonov had a humbling view of its vast panorama, with countries and seas clearly visible, moving colossally beneath him. He was the first person to see Earth from this perspective, and it gave him a sort of funny feeling, a mixture of nostalgia, or hope and bewilderment, at seeing humanity's home without being on it. Even today, only a handful of people have experienced the purest form of this sensation, but it has a name, the overview effect. Researchers describe the feeling as a state of awe, with self-transcendent qualities, precipitated by a particularly striking visual stimulus. Astronauts report overwhelming emotion and feelings of identification with humankind and the planet as a whole. Such is the power of the overview effect that astronauts on long missions in orbit take time out to gaze upon the world as a form of therapy, 
helping them cope with the claustrophobia of space. The point is this. From very far away, the Earth looks like a unified and connected whole. A vibrant, colourful ecosystem floating in what is, on the whole, let's be honest, a pretty sterile universe. Up there, it's quite hard to comprehend the patchwork of vested interests and squabbles that happen down here. Even harder to make sense of them. This idea is closely related to the Gaia Principle, named after the Greek goddess Gaia, who was mother of all life. It sees Earth as a single living organism, with all its processes acting in concert to form a synergistic, self-regulating system, everything working together to create and perpetuate conditions for life. It seems these concepts hit harder when we all take a step back, or up. Safely on terra firma after his escapade in the heavens, Alexei Leonov was warmly congratulated and rewarded for his achievements by the Soviet Union's leadership. But while the first spacewalk was a major win for Russia, at least as important for Leonov was his experience witnessing firsthand the awesomeness of the universe. Years later, he told the BBC, Only out there can you feel the greatness and enormity of all that's around us. On Earth, you just don't get a sense of it. Earth from the Moon The first ever photo of the Earth from the vicinity of the Moon was not taken by Neil Armstrong or Buzz Aldrin, but by a spaceship. In August 1966, the Lunar Orbiter 1 began its mission to record the Moon's surface at close range, looking for appropriate landing areas for the Surveyor and Apollo missions. It was one of several orbiters to gather data for the first Moon landing which took place in 1969. The image shows a crescent Earth apparently rising above the lunar horizon, the curvature of the Moon and its many craters clearly visible, as are cloud formations down on Earth. This is the first image of our planet framed by the Moon, and was taken on the 23rd of August at about 4.30pm Greenwich Mean Time, during the spacecraft's 16th orbit, moments before it once again slipped behind the lunar surface. In 2008, NASA released a high-contrast version of the image, showing more detail of the pockmarked landscape, as well as sharper weather patterns back on Earth. Only a few months after the Lunar Orbiter captured its images, in December 1966, the ATS-1 mission went a step further, taking the first picture of the Moon in Earth's orbit, and then the first full-disc image of the Earth from a geostationary orbit, some 35,000 kilometres above the equator. The ATS was a communication satellite, but watching cloud patterns roll across the Earth's surface, scientists realised the potential for predicting the weather too. As one historian noted, for the first time, rapid imaging of nearly an entire hemisphere was possible. We could watch, fascinated, as storm systems developed and moved and were captured in a time series of images. Today, such images are an indispensable part of weather analysis and forecasting. Earthrise This is one of the most famous pictures ever taken. It was captured on Christmas Eve 1968 by American astronaut Bill Anders while he was on a mission orbiting about 780 kilometres above the Moon. The staggering image appears to show the Earth rising over the Moon's horizon. For perspective, the width of the visible lunar area is about 175 kilometres. Earth appears on its side with the Atlantic Ocean visible as well as West Africa. It's a vivid picture the marble-like Earth contrasting with the barren landscape of the Moon, both enveloped by an eerie blankness. Later, describing the sensation of seeing his native planet from so far away, Bill Anders summed up his experience of the overview effect. When I looked up and saw the Earth coming up on this very stark, beat-up Moon horizon, I was immediately almost overcome with the thought, here we came all this way to the Moon, and yet the most significant thing we're seeing is our home planet, the Earth. But, as is so often the case with impactful, famous images, Earthrise isn't quite what it seems. This is the original, the famous picture reproduced so often, appearing on the covers of countless magazines and teenagers' bedroom walls, has been edited, cropped, and reorientated. The published image is rotated 95 degrees to better convey the sense of the Earth rising over the moonscape. It is also not the first image of the Earth taken by humans from the moon, Pipped to that honour by this, some would say, just as impactful black and white picture taken a few minutes earlier by Anders before he managed to get hold of some colour film. Amazingly, the conversation between the astronauts was recorded, so you can eavesdrop the Earthrise picture being taken. Oh my god, look at that picture over there. There's the Earth coming up. Wow, that pretty. Hey, don't take that, it's not scheduled. <laughs> You got a color film, Jim? Hand me a roll of color quick. Oh, man, that's great. Quick. 
down here. Just grab me a color. A color exterior. Green. Yep. That one? Yeah, I'm looking for one. C368. Anything, quick. Here. Hey, I got it right here. Let me get up this one. Left there. Bill, I got a phrase that's very clear right here. Got it? Yep. Take several of them. Take several of them. Here, give me a minute. Let me just get the right setting here. Okay, calm down, my boy. Oh, I got a raise. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. 250 at F11. Okay. Well, there's a very explosion. I did. I picked you up there. As well as Anders, you can hear Mission Commander Frank Borman and Jim Lovell, who was later famous for surviving the disastrous events of the Apollo 13 mission. Despite Earthrise being neither a first nor a completely honest depiction of our world, it remains one of the most perfect images to encapsulate the overview effect. In 2003, Life magazine described it as the most influential environmental photograph ever taken, while later an article appearing in the New York Times credited it with launching the environmental movement. In 2018, one of the craters seen in the picture was named Anders Earthrise, in honour of the historic snap. But the image is probably best summed up by Anders himself, who, commemorating the picture 50 years on, said, We set out to explore the moon, and instead discovered the Earth. Incidentally, Edgar Mitchell, Apollo 14 astronaut who walked on the moon in 1971, came up with another nice response to the overview effect, when he said, You develop an instant global consciousness, a people orientation, an intense dissatisfaction with the state of the world, and a compulsion to do something about it. From out there on the moon, international politics looks so petty. You want to grab a politician by the scruff of the neck and drag him a quarter of a million miles out and say, Look at that, you son of a bitch! Earth from other planets. On the 4th of January 2004, the NASA exploration rover, Spirit, landed on Gusev Crater on Mars and began photographing its surroundings. Two months later, on March the 8th, it pointed its camera up to capture a partial eclipse of the Sun by the Martian moon Deimos. Shortly before sunrise, it took this picture, the first photo of Earth from another planet. Despite Mars being our celestial next-door neighbour, Earth, at a range of 99 million miles, looks more like a star, as it basks brightly in the sun's rays. A decade later, fellow Martian rover Curiosity snapped the Earth and Moon in the same frame, although you have to have pretty good eyesight to see it. The image was taken just after sunset, on the 529th day of Curiosity's mission. It was edited to remove the effect of cosmic interference, but according to experts, a human with normal vision standing on Mars would see Earth similarly to how we can see Venus with the naked eye. According to NASA, Earth and the Moon would appear as two evening stars. In July 2006, the space probe Cassini captured the pale blue orb image of Earth, as well as what is described as a faint suggestion of our Moon, from the rings of Saturn, around 930 million miles away. Also appearing minutely in the picture is Saturn's moon Enceladus, one of a handful of extraterrestrial bodies rumoured to hold water beneath its icy surface. And for a full perspective, here's Earth from the other side, by the Parker Solar Probe from within the orbit of Mercury, the closest planet to our star. It was snapped a mere 61 million miles away in June 2023, during its 16th close pass of the Sun. The picture comes with a video of the solar system viewed through interference from the solar corona, in other words, the Sun's rays, and features many members of the planetary family, including Venus, Earth, and Jupiter. Pale blue dot. This is perhaps the most striking, and certainly the most distant, image of Earth ever taken. At this range, the Earth is nothing more than a faint point of light, and in the original picture, it's just over a tenth of a pixel across. The image is expanded for clarity, but even so, our world appears tiny and isolated in space, drifting alone in a band of sunlight. The photo was taken in 1990 by the deep space probe Voyager 1 from a distance of 3.7 billion miles, 32 degrees above the ecliptic plane, in other words, Earth's orbital plane around the Sun. In 2020, NASA released an enhanced version of the pale blue dot picture using modern image processing software and techniques. Clearer are the sunlight rays scattered within the camera optics, especially the ray dramatically intersecting with Earth. This was actually just one of 60 images captured by Voyager 1, which collectively make up the so-called family portrait, 
a mosaic of the solar system pictured together in place for the first time. There are a few notable absentees. Mars is missing because of problems with its position, and Mercury was too close to the Sun to be seen. Pluto, then a planet, now a dwarf planet, was too tiny and dim to be captured. After snapping its famous pic of Earth and friends, Voyager 1 turned around and ploughed a course for interstellar space. 34 years later, it's still going, hurtling through the solar system at 38,000 miles per hour. Today, it's well over 15 billion miles from Earth, and with every passing second, moves 17 kilometres further away. Yet in a stark demonstration of the enormity of the universe, it remains in relatively close contact with the Sun and planets. It will reach the Oort cloud, which is the shell of astronomical debris surrounding the solar system, marking the end of the Sun's gravitational influence, in about 300 years. If you're struggling to associate the pale blue dot with the overview effect, then you're probably not alone. After all, it's just a speck on a dark canvas, not much to get your brain around. But listen to what the astronomer and scientist Carl Sagan had to say about it, and see if you feel differently. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you've ever heard of, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives. The aggregate of our joy and suffering, thousands of confident religions, ideologies and economic doctrines, every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species live there on a moat of dust suspended in a sunbeam. Leonov was warmly congratulated and rewarded for his achievements by the Soviet Union's leadership. Shit. <laughs>